It has been two years since NASA's James Webb Telescope gave us a stunning first look at the depths of our universe. The $10 billion telescope is the largest and most powerful in space. It captured these images showing a small patch of sky with thousands of never before seen galaxies. Since the pictures were released in 2022, they've provided insight into when our universe began expanding more than 13 billion years ago. And to commemorate the achievement, NASA has released new images showing two distant galaxies actually interacting with one another. Scientists say that the intertwined galaxies actually resemble a penguin guarding its egg. So for more on all of the mysteries of the universe, I am excited to bring in Jane Rigby. She's an astrophysicist and a senior project scientist for the Webb Telescope at NASA. So who better to talk to? Jane, let's start off just by having you explain a little bit more about what these images tell us. Yeah, so we have a celebratory image for our second anniversary. And what we're seeing in this image of the penguin and the egg are two galaxies that are not only interacting, they are on a path to merge and become one bigger galaxy. Uh, the, the redder or orangey one, the penguin, um, there's, that's a spiral galaxy like our own Milky Way, except the arms have been twisted and warped by the gravity of the companion. This is a really common way that galaxies grow over time. Our own Milky Way has merged with other galaxies, and in a couple giga years, it's going to, a billion years, it's going to merge with the Andromeda galaxy. So by studying images like this, we can understand that process in the, the life cycle of galaxies like the Milky Way. So interesting, the life cycles uh, and seeing these two merge to form another galaxy. Uh, when, we, when we think about the James Webb, we have to, of course, give proper respect to the Hubble telescope because it was revolutionary for its time. And I actually want to put up a side-by-side -side where you can take a look at what the James Webb telescope has shown us in comparison mm -hmm. to what we saw from Hubble. And it really is incredible, the depths of detail. Talk to us about some of the most important findings that the Webb telescope has discovered since the images were first released. Sure, and I love in that 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 it, that side by side in Web you're seeing through the dust. You're actually seeing through our own galaxy to see the other side of our galaxy and then then past it. Um, as far as the biggest results to date, and we're two years in, our our best results are are coming in a mile a minute. I would say the that we. It's really important to me that we did exactly what we said we would do to, uh, to just figure out what did the early universe look like? What was that first billion years like after the Big Bang? That was really where Hubble just couldn't touch. And we really didn't know what was out there or how galaxies got their start. With Webb, we found more than a thousand galaxies that are so far away, we're seeing them as they looked more than a or more than 13 billion, like, uh, 13 billion years into the past. So we, we've done that. We've done what we said we would do. We have taken the baby pictures of the universe. We know that galaxies got started very quickly, very vigorously. They built black holes very early. It all got started much more vigorously than we had expected. We've also been studying, you know, from everything from stars in our uh, stars in our own neighborhood, planets in our own solar system, and planets orbiting other stars. So it's been a it's been every part of our universe. Uh, Webb has been exploring and touching, and it's been so exciting to see the results come in. It's really amazing, and seeing uh, some answers to some of those very formative questions about our universe, how we all got our start, how uh, stars are developing in the star nursery uh, that Webb has shown us. I have to ask what's next for the telescope, and especially since we're talking about galaxies and stars, how much are we learning about individual planets in any of those galaxies? Yeah, so in our own galaxy is the place we can best learn about planets. And we can learn about planets in our own solar system. There are potentially habitable worlds in our own solar system, some of the moons of some of the outer planets. And there are also more that there are several thousand planets we now know about orbiting stars in our own solar system. That's crazy. When I went to high school, we didn't know that. We only knew about our own solar system. So we know that planets are common now. And what Webb has been able to do is zoom in on these planets and really study their atmospheres, if they have them, or their composition, what's out there, what are, what are in these planets. Um, for me, it's been like going back to chemistry class, the number of atoms and molecules that Webb has been finding in these planets. It's still early days, but for massive, for big planets, we're getting a sense of 
What are their atmospheres like? What's the chemistry going on inside of them? For small, rocky planets like the Earth or, or up to the mass of a Neptune, we're trying to figure out, do any of those have atmospheres? Are any of those possibly habitable? Mm. That's a hard question, but it's one that I'm looking forward to see how hard Webb can, can push on that question. Hard questions, fundamental questions, and I have to say all these images are just so breathtaking. It shows you really the possibilities are endless. NASA's Jane That's Rigby, thank you so much.